Hey everyone, welcome to another Clean Machine Live. My name is Jeff Palmer. I'm the CEO and founder of Clean Machine Ad. It is a plant-based fitness nutrition. We're discussing um, how to keep the optimal nutrition up. So when you reach my age, the wonderful age of just turning 60, you can still be strong and healthy, even on a plant-based diet, especially on a plant-based diet. We're going to see why strength is really important based on certain nutrients. And one in particular, we're going to be talking about the hormone D3. Uh, I know people call it vitamin D3, but it's technically not a vitamin. It is a hormone that our body can create indirectly from sunshine, uh, but we can also take as a nutritional supplement and it is found in some foods. Okay, before we get started, let me go ahead and uh, get the disclaimer out of the way. Uh, this video is for informational and educational purposes only and is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. So the title of the study, Vitamin D and Dynapenia. You know, <laughs> I, I, it's, as much as I've been reading studies, this is the first time I've seen that. I've seen sarcopenia used a lot. So what is dynapenia? Okay, so osteopenia is osteo meaning bone and penia meaning loss. So it's bone loss, osteopenia. Sarcopenia is sarco meaning talking about the sarcoplasm, which is in muscle tissue, sarco, so meaning muscle, and penia, meaning loss. So sarcopenia is age-related muscle loss. Well, dynapenia comes from the Greek word dyno, or dyne, or dyne, D-I-Y-N-E. Uh, that means power, and this dynapenia is the loss of strength. So we don't want to lose strength because strength makes us weak and we tend to fall. And when we fall and our bones are brittle because of the osteopenia, we can break bones, fracture hips. And hip fractures is actually one of the leading causes of death in nursing homes. So it's definitely important, especially as we age, to keep our strength vital. But let's dive into why vitamin D was used in this study. And I'm going to go back to uh, an original study pull it up here, um, that actually shows um, a 19% increase in uh, muscle strength. So I'm going to go ahead and put it in the chat box. And you can see that study. And I'll pull it up all, also on the screen too as well. I'll put it in the comments section. and then pull it up on the screen. So we're looking at, you know, some people ask me, hey, Jeff, you're a, a fitness company. Why do you have a vitamin D3? Um, multi reasons. One, we need a good source of vegan D3 since there are so few. And two, vitamin D3 is very important for muscle strength. You can see the title of this study, the effects of vitamin D supplementation on upper and lower body muscle strength levels in healthy individuals. A systematic review, a meta-analysis is taking a look at a bunch of different studies and finding that the upper and lower limb muscle strength had standardized mean difference of 32%. Um, so, uh, respectively, suggesting that vitamin D supplementation significantly increased muscle strength in the experimental group. Okay, so, you know, vitamin D, as we know, is very important for brain health, for uh, for immune health. Um, check out my videos on vitamin D3 and the immune system. It's pretty amazing, especially when we're talking about immunity defense against viruses. Super important. Um, but we're talking about muscle strength here in specifically dynapenia. Okay, so we know through multiple studies that taking vitamin D supplements can actually increase strength. And that's in healthy, any age groups uh, over, um, over 18. So healthy adults can take vitamin D3 and increase muscle strength. Now, that alone would be good enough to, to take that if you're interested in getting better workouts in the gym. 
But the important part is not actually how much vitamin D you get or even how much vitamin D you absorb, but how much vitamin D you actually make bioactive. So once that vitamin D goes into our system, 25-OH, it has to be converted to a active form of vitamin D3 for our body to use that. I'm going to pull up a, a really cool study on the microbiome and the effects it has on it. So let me find it here. And I will, um, I will pull that up. Um, so it's interesting that vitamin D absorption uh, is one thing, but vitamin D gets stored, especially in fat tissues. Vitamin D3 is, and I say vitamin D3, it's hormone D3, but D3 is absorbed into fat tissues. It can be stored and held there, but in its inactive state. Then our body can release it from the fat tissues and then it get turned into bioactive form. But how does it do that? Okay, so let's take a look at this next study. Okay, all right, I'm going to put this in this because this is really important. And why important? Because of a plant-based diet. Now, to, to understand this, it's going to take a couple of posts here, so bear with me. But once you understand how important not just getting sufficient amounts of vitamin D3, but turning that D3 into active forms, bioactive forms of D3, so that our body can actually use it for immune health, for bone health, for muscle strength. That's a key component here. And researchers just recently, just within the last two years, have discovered the mechanism by which that happens. According to the new research, the gut microbiome diversity is strongly linked to levels of active vitamin D. That's the kind we use, suggesting that the body's ability to metabolize vitamin B, D may be more important than the actual amount that is being uh, absorbed or even stored in the body. Now that's pretty important that there are these researchers, and this is a direct quote, you know, everything you see in quotations is directly coming from studies. They are talking, saying that, wait a minute, the active form is the most important form. And if we're not converting it or making it, metabolizing it, and then they discovered that the way that the body does turn it into bioactive form has a lot to do with our microbiome. Now, this is where it gets interesting. Okay, so you have to have a healthy microbiome in order to activate your D3 so that you can utilize that D3 for bone health for muscle health. So if you have a, a messed up uh, or dysbiosis, they call it, microbiome, where you have low counts because you're eating a heavy meat-based diet or heavy uh, or alcohol use or antibiotics, these wipe out our good bacteria. Let me take this off the screen so you can uh, see me. And um, so when we disrupt the microbiome, it, it reduces our level to bioactivate this. Here's where the study gets really interesting. So they did, they looked at uh, people in California and I'm gonna post this direct quote up there because this is kind of mind blowing. Okay, so this is a direct quote from the study because the participants lived in different regions of the US, those in the study exposed to different amounts of direct sunlight as a source of vitamin D. So when they looked at those who lived in San Diego, they obviously got the most sun out of the population that they studied nationwide. But they also had the most precursor form of the vitamin D, not necessarily the most active amounts of vitamin D. So even if you're getting direct sunlight exposure, even if you're getting a lot of it, like people living in San Diego, even with that direct sunlight exposure, you could possibly not be turning that into bioactive forms and able to actually use it properly. So even though the people living in San Diego had the highest amounts of precursor, that means before it turns into the active form of vitamin D3, it didn't matter. So you could get tons of sunlight and still be deficient or insufficient in vitamin D because you're not having enough bioactive activated forms of vitamin D3 in your system. Interesting. So you can be getting lots of sunlight 
and be deficient in vitamin D3. Isn't that weird? Okay, so it's more about the gut health. All right, so let's dig into what's that important. Now, at first they saying, oh, it's because of uh, biodiversity. Well, we know a plant-based diet increases the biodiversity, the amount of different strains of bacteria, healthy bacteria, the probiotics that live in our system. Why? Because we're feeding it lots of plant, polyphenols, fiber, all the, all the prebiotics. These are the things that come only from plants that feed that gut bacteria and diversify, give our a, a bigger audience you know, of good bacteria in there. When you eat an animal product, it creates a bile environment. That bile is secreted by our body to help break down that tough to break down animal tissue. And that bile is where bad bacteria thrive. So when you increase the amount of bad bacteria, you decrease the amount of good bacteria. So every time you're eating an animal-based diet, you're increasing bad bacteria and decreasing the good guys. And you're decreasing the diversity. Many of the strains actually can die off. Okay, so that part is important. But let's take a look at this next section when they dug even deeper to how to get to that bioactive form. I'll put it up on the screen right here. In addition to discovering a link between active vitamin D and overall microbiome diversity, which is increased by a plant-based diet, the researchers also noted that 12 particular types of bacteria appeared more often in the gut microbiomes of men with lots of active vitamin D3. Okay, so we know it's probably one or all of those 12 bacteria that are actually taking vitamin D3 and converting it into bioactive forms. And the more you can have those 12 forms of vitamin D3, of, of bacteria, the more bioactive vitamin D3 you can have. The more you can take the D3 that you're getting from sun or the D3 that you're getting from diet or supplementation and turn it into active forms that can help boost our immune system, help actually strengthen our muscles, help benefit our bones, all of the above. Okay, the last sentence here is probably the most important. Most of those 12 bacteria produce butyrate, a beneficial short-chain fatty acid. So how is butyrate produced? Butyrate, by and large, is produced by our gut bacteria chewing up plant fiber. Remember, fiber only comes from plants. There is zero fiber in any animal product. Eggs, dairy, meat, fish, chicken, zero fiber, none doesn't happen unless it's in the guts of a herbivore animal that you're eating and you're eating the stomach contents, but zero fiber in any animal tissues. Okay, so when it says those 12 bacteria are butyrate producing, it means they are consuming fiber, meaning the more fiber that you eat, aka the more plants that you eat, the more population you have of these 12 bacteria, the more conversion of vitamin D3 into active forms. Now, it's interesting, you know, some of the arguments against a plant-based diet is that you can't get D3 from a plant-based source. <laughs> and it's funny that our body is actually set up to make the bioactive form, the form we actually use of D3 only by bacteria <laughs> that only eat fiber. So that would tell you it's just the opposite, that on a plant-based diet, you become better at converting D3 into bioactive forms. That a plant-based diet will give you more boost if you're exposed to sunlight or, or taking it in as a supplement. So this is, this is just the opposite is true. When you consume an animal-based diet and it has D3 in it, you're, you're, you're suppressing and killing the good bacteria that would turn it into bioactive form. So even though it has D3 in the animal product, you're probably getting much less, if at all, or maybe not any of that D3 activated because you're suppressing the amount of good bacteria that would turn that D3 into its bioactive form so our body can actually use it. Boom.
<laughs> there it is again. All these things that we used to assume are better in an animal-based diet are actually worse. And now we understand because we're understanding what our microbiome contributes to our overall benefits of our health. And the part that they play in making so much of what we need active, turning it into the proper forms and doing that, and that these good bacteria by and large feed on plant polyphenols, plant fiber, plant prebiotics. That's what these things feed on. The more you feed them the right stuff that only come from plants, the more you can have healthy bacteria that can convert these nutrients into their bioactive forms and get you what your body needs. Okay, so let's get back to the study on the, the penia, <laughs> the dynapenia or loss of strength. Okay, um, so let's go ahead and pull up the top of the study. Okay, so this is the actual study. If you wanna copy it down, you can uh, post, uh, post the link into your browser and you can see it. It'll also be in the links below. Uh, so this study came out in September of 2022, and it's R25-hydroxy vitamin D. That is the active form, 25-OHD, uh, deficiency and insufficiency risk factors for the incidence of dynapenia or loss of muscle strength. Not size, that's sarcopenia. That's loss of muscle mass. So you don't want sarcopenia, which is what they call age-related muscle loss. And look. I'm 60 years of age. Does that look like muscle loss to you? No, I haven't lost any size or muscle in the last 20 years because I work out and because I take good care of my nutrition. It's not age related. It's lack of nutrition, poor nutrition, lack of a plant-based, healthy plant-based diet and lack of enough sufficient exercise to stimulate that muscle to grow. When you have those two things, there shouldn't be a reason or a significant drop off. Yes, probably a little bit of drop off, just basic wear and tear on the human body uh, over time that could happen. But look, you should be 60, 70, 80 years old and still be strong and healthy, maintaining a decent amount of muscle mass and maintaining your strength so that you can run, you can play, you can do the things you want to, all the way you should be to the healthy end of your life, um, die peacefully in the sleep. That's the good way to go. Uh, not suffering from disease, not suffering from osteopenia, bone loss, sarcopenia, muscle loss, uh, dynapenia, strength loss. Look, at 60 years of age, I'm still benching over 400 pounds. <laughs> that's, that's not strength loss. It's not age related. I take uh, 4,000 IUs of supplement of vitamin D3. I searched and searched because the vegan D3s that were out on the market one, some of them weren't organic. Two, many of them that were organic or a couple of them that were organic were from mushrooms and mushrooms produce vitamin D2 naturally. And then you can expose them to direct sunlight and they'll produce some vitamin D3. But you're generally getting vitamin D2 and D3 and D2 is shown to increase muscle by 0%. D2 does not increase muscle and D2 could negatively impact or interfere with your utilization of D3. So I didn't like that. I took it anyway because it's the only vegan sources available. But when I found this, it's 100% pure D3. No D2 in this at all. It's pure D3 cholecalciferol crystal. And it's isolated from organic algae. So it is organic. It is vegan. And it's 100% pure vegan D3. I'm going to post some of the results of this from the study. Let me find it in the research, pulling up so many different studies here. Okay, here we go. Um, this was a human study on veg D3, the exact kind of D3 that we actually use in our product. And I'll pull it up on the screen. Oh, wrong one. Scroll down, pull it up on the screen. There we go. In recent human study, Veg D3, the kind that is in Clean Machines Vegan D3, was shown to be highly bioavailable. 
It increased plasma and vitamin D levels by approximately 77.3%. And fast acting, people taking the vitamin D3 in the human study went from vitamin D deficient to vitamin D sufficient in just seven days. One week going from deficient to sufficient. That's amazing. Why is that important? Because in this dynapenia study, and I'll pull it up too here for you. Okay, so there are three levels of vitamin D3. There is uh, vitamin D3 deficient. That's puts you at risk for disease states. There's insufficient, <laughs> okay, deficient, then insufficient, which means you're not getting enough, but you're probably not quite at the risk of causing uh, severe disease states or advanced disease states. And then there's um, sufficient, which means you're getting enough or you're optimal. That means you're getting enough to provide all the health benefits that it's supposed to, and you're not at risk. So when, and I'm gonna pull this up on the screen, this is the study. And then here is the comment. When only individuals without osteoporosis and those who did not use vitamin D, C, D supplementation, those who were not taking into vitamin D3, those who were deficient and insufficient were at risk factors for incidence of dynapenia. So even to the insufficient level, which is uh, the, the middle one, there's deficient, which you're at risk for disease states, insufficient, which is normally not at risk. But this study showed if you're not taking a vitamin D3 supplement and you're insufficient, you were still at a 77 to 78% risk of having uh, dynapenia or a or <laughs> nutrient uh, caused uh, deficiencies of muscle and strength loss, muscle strength loss. So really important why a plant-based diet can help, why taking a uh, a vegan uh, supplement, an organic vegan D3, pure D3, not tainted with vitamin D2, like like mushrooms and and uh, and uh, lichen can be. Um, so this is a 100% pure D3, no D2 in it whatsoever, um, and it's organic and the only and the first and only one from organic algae. So really cool stuff. That's why I bring this. I want you to be your healthiest life, live your healthiest life, live it strong to the end so you're not getting weak and frail and causing you know, uh, falls that could lead to fractures and even concussions or many other just not pleasant um, experiences that could lead to infections. And, and you know, one of the leading causes of death in nursing homes and, and, and age facilities. Um, um, so there's just really no need for it. It's so simple to take a D3 supplement. Look, we're living indoors. I'm not outdoors right now. We're all living indoors. We're working indoors. We're not getting that direct sunlight. And even most of us, even when they are getting the direct sunlight, aren't getting bioactive conversion because we're just not eating enough fiber. 95 to 98% of Americans do not meet the minimum requirements for fiber intake. It's because you're not eating enough plants, period. Just that simple. And if you're not eating enough plants and you're not eating enough fiber, you're not feeding the microbiome enough to populate in order to convert that vitamin D3. So even if you were taking a lot of vitamin D3, you could still be insufficient or deficient, not getting the health results you were. That's why doing a plant-based diet exercising and supplementing all three together with a uh, vegan supplement, this is the way to get the best results for you overall health. That's why combining all these different things, that's why we are a plant-based fitness nutrition, looking at a plant-based diet, optimal nutrition by using supplements if you're not getting them from your diet or directly from sunlight, and then utilizing a healthy microbiome by eating a heavy plant-based diet and then exercising. So you strengthen the bones, you strengthen the immune system, things like this. You combine that. That's why I do what I do, why I'm in plant-based fitness nutrition, why I bring these specific products to market. Why 4,000 I use? I'm gonna go ahead and, 
Uh, I don't think I have it handy. But uh, a great consortium uh, from probably 20 or more different countries, some of the top PhDs, researchers, and scientists put together a consensus statement that's saying that uh, the consensus among our group of academics, of scientists, and researchers believe that taking 4,000 IUs, the exact amount that we use in our vegan D3, 4,000 IUs will protect the vast majority of people, regardless of age, regardless of body weight, regardless of, um, of skin tone, uh, melanin, the darker your skin, the actually the more vitamin D3 you need. You can see some vitamin D3 shining through in this video. Sorry about that. <laughs> the sun's coming down. Well, thank you guys for watching. The sun's shining on me, so I got to get my vitamin D3 in. And I hope you enjoyed this. Please give it a thumbs up and share so we can get this out to more people. This is vital information that can improve people's health and strengthen their bones, strengthen their muscles, and make you healthy and fit. Keep up with the good nutrition, share this video so we can get this information out there and improve more people's lives. Live long and prosper. Thanks for joining me.